Hi guys and welcome to Anatomy Helper. Today we're going to be looking at a connective tissue histology review. Alright, let's get started. Why don't you guys take a moment and see if you can recognize uh, this tissue under the microscope. For students at SDSU, you will not be recognizing this particular slide, but um, stay with me because I'm going to talk about some things that you'll see on other slides. All right, so this is going to be areolar connective tissue. Let's take a closer look at the next slide. All right, so this is also areolar connective tissue, but I just wanted to point out some things. First of all, uh, areolar connective tissue is going to be a proper connective tissue, and specifically it's going to be a loose proper connective tissue. Because it's a proper connective tissue, the cells that we find in it, which you can see right here, that's the nuclei, are going to be fibroblasts or fibrocytes. Um, the, the red fibers in here, take a moment, see if you can figure out what these red proteins are. That's right, these are going to be collagen. And again, that's a protein fiber that you're going to see running through a lot of the connective tissue that we're going to see today. And then we also have this other, these other um, strands, proteins, running through here that are kind of either blue or black colored in a lot of different slides. And these are going to be your elastic fibers. Now because areolar connective tissue is loose, uh, that means that it has more ground substance and less fibers. So although you see a lot of fibers in here, um, you're going to see a lot less than when you look at the, um, the dense connective tissues. And all the spaces that you see in here, that's where the matrix or the ground substance is going to be found. And the matrix is composed of both the ground substance and the fibers that you see. Um, areolar connective tissue will also have in it uh, macrophages, mast cells, adipocytes, and other tissue or other uh, cell types. So let's um, see where we can find areolar connective tissue. If you don't recognize this, this is actually a slide of the scalp. And up here we see up here we see the epidermis, which is that stratified squamous epithelial tissue. And then all of this uh, down here would be the dermis, which is made up of connective tissue. So all of this is the dermis. And then I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little bit of a difference in the uh, how the tissue looks from here to here. Right. Up here looks kind of very fine and delicate, and that is actually going to be the areolar connective tissue up there. It's called, if you guys have had the integumentary unit yet, it's called the papillary layer. Now take a moment and see if you can recognize this tissue, this connective tissue type down here. That's right, this is going to be dense, irregular connective tissue. So from about here down, that's that dense, irregular connective tissue, and that layer is going to be called the reticular layer made up of dense, irregular connective tissue. So the papillary layer and the reticular layer make up the dermis, which is all of this pink that you see. All right, so in this one slide, we got both areolar connective tissue and dense, irregular connective tissue done. And you will actually also see that the pink here, those are all of the collagen fibers. And in this case, in the dense irregular connective tissue, those collagen fibers are banded together, and so you get these really thick 
stripes versus the areolar connective tissue that's up here. It's not banded together as uh, as much, and so you see this kind of more smooth-looking layer. Okay, take a moment, see if you can identify this tissue. All right, this is adipose connective tissue. I don't have a whole lot to say about this slide. It's it looks pretty much like a bunch of bubbles. Um, the well, let's take a closer look. Here we go. We zoom in, and um, this everything that you see here is basic basically the plasma membrane of an adipocyte, which is the type of of cell. Adipocyte. Site means cell. So this is a fat cell, and it's going to have a nucleus that's actually kind of pushed off to the side, and then all of this is plasma membrane, and it's basically just filled with fat. Um, for the uh, Grossmont students or the Miramar students that have to know this, um, this here is our blood vessel, so it looks very different than the adipocytes. SDSU students, you don't need to know that. Uh, the blood vessel you can see is wrapped in smooth muscle. That's how you can identify it. So let's take a moment and look at where we find adipose connective tissue. And again, this is our scalp that we just looked at. So last time we looked at an image that looked like that. right? We saw just the epidermis and then a, the two layers of the dermis. Well here, so this is all dermis, that's what we learned a couple of slides ago. This uh, darker layer up here is the epidermis, because it's on top. Epi means on top. And then all of this down here is called the hypodermis. because it's hypo, which means below the dermis. And this, if you could see, you can see these kind of, all these bubbles like this. So this is going to be that adipose connective tissue that we just looked at, making up that hypodermis. Okay, take a moment, see if you can recognize this tissue type. If you said dense, regular connective tissue, you would be right. And again, all the red that we're seeing is going to be collagen fibers. And let's uh, zoom in a little bit. If we zoom in, we can see that these collagen fibers are kind of, they're wiggly, but they're all basically going in the same direction. And that's what makes it dense, regular, because it's going in the same direction. Um, the dense regular connective tissue is a connective tissue proper. It happens to be a dense connective tissue proper, which means it has more proteins and less ground substance. So it's basically all fibrous. Um, and if you remember, in the connective tissue proper, you're always going to have fibroblasts and fibrocytes as the cells. So all of these are the, the nuclei of the fibroblasts or fibrocytes. Now we find this tissue, uh, dense regular connective tissue, in things like tendons and ligaments. And um, we'll see in a minute a, a different slide, but uh, I want you to pay attention that in dense regular connective tissue, Generally, the fibroblasts are going to kind of line up, um, kind of all in the same row. Okay, I wanted to compare dense irregular to dense regular connective tissue, just to kind of hammer the point home about this um, collagen. So again, these are both connect. These are both connective tissue proper. That's the type of connective tissue it is. They are actually dense connective tissue proper, right? We have dense irregular over here, 
and dense regular over here. And again, the pink is the collagen fiber, so you can see that these collagen fibers are kind of going every which way, versus these collagen fibers are going straight across. Okay, take a moment, see if you can identify this tissue type. So this tissue here is actually going to be smooth muscle, which I know is not a connective tissue, but for those of you at SDSU, you will have this on your unit one exam. Um, I wanted to show you the difference between these two. Uh, even though you won't have, again, SDSU, you won't have these on the same test, but you will have some times where they're actually on the same slide and you need to know the difference. So um, the difference here is that in the smooth muscle, you'll see these the nuclei here are kind of spindle looking versus the nuclei here are more dotted. The nuclei over here are actually inside of the smooth muscle, and the smooth muscle is actually what's pink. So you're actually looking at, this is all cellular material here. Where over here, that's the nuclei and that's the cell. That's the nuclei and that's the cell. That's the nuclei and that's the cell. So all the pink stuff that you see here is actually extracellular. It's outside the cell, and the pink here is the collagen fibers. So hopefully that helps a little bit. You get this spindle shape with the smooth muscle and you get a little bit more of a, a circular or oval shape here. Okay, moving on. What's this connective tissue? This is going to be hyaline cartilage, the most abundant cartilage in the body. And this uh, hyaline cartilage is going to fall under the category of supporting, actually all of our cartilage is going to fall under supporting connective tissue. And then specifically it's hyaline cartilage. The way that you know it's cartilage is by the lacuna. So let's zoom in a little bit more. The lacuna is basically the hole or the little pit that forms around the cell. And since we're dealing with cartilage, What's the name of the cell that lives in there? Chondrocyte. Chondro for cartilage, site for cell. And that little hole, again, again is called a lacuna. Um, in cartilage, and specifically in hyaline cartilage, we still have collagen running through the, the matrix, which is going to be out here, but it's there's less of it, and so you can't actually see it. It just appears to be smooth and glassy. On the outside here, we have a, a whole layer of tissue called the peri, meaning around, chondrium, which means around cartilage. This is a dense, irregular connective tissue layer that's going to wrap around the entire uh, cartilage. And then just underneath that, we're going to see a, a couple of cells, like here and here and here and here, that do not have a lacuna yet. They're not wrapped in a lacuna like these guys are. And those are the baby cartilage cells called chondro blasts. I think of B for baby. So chondroblasts uh, live on the outside and they do not have a lacuna versus the chondrocytes which live on the inside of the cartilage and they have a lacuna surrounding them. Okay, this slide is not at um, SDSU or Grossman, I think, but it is at a couple of the other community colleges, so I thought I'd include it. This is going to be elastic cartilage. looks pretty similar to hyaline cartilage, except if you get close, you can actually see 
those elastic fibers in here. And again, elastic fibers almost always stain black or dark blue purple color. That's about all I have to say about that one. All right, this should be pretty recognizable. I'll give you a moment to identify the tissue under the microscope. This is going to be compact bone. And one of the telltale signs that this is compact bone is going to be this structure here. So what is this structure here that I just circled? That's called the osteon. You can see several others of them. It's kind of the functional unit of the bone. We have blood coming up and down and lymphatic and nervous uh, tissue all coming up inside here. That's going to be the central canal or haversion canal. And then if we zoom in a little bit closer, I wanted to show you there is the osteocyte. And that osteocyte also lives in a lacuna, which is kind of a pit. And then that osteocyte actually has little appendages that stick out um, where it's able to actually give nutrients and communicate with other osteocytes. And these dark structures are called canaliculi. Canaliculi, which just means little canals. And that's kind of how these guys communicate and how they get blood from the um, blood vessels that are in the central canal. Now if I change the focus on the microscope a little bit, we'll see the next structure of the osteon. These are going to be the lamellae. So can you see these kind of almost looks like tree rings, so the rings on a tree. So in between those, so I'll just darken it in, so there and there. In between those layers, that's going to be the lamellae. And lamellae just means sheet. And so those, those are the sheets or rings of bone that are forming the osteon. Lastly, what is this connective tissue? And again, actually, uh, for SDSU folks, compact bone and this, which happens to be spongy bone, will appear on Unit 2 for Grossmont students and some Miramar students, I think it appears on Unit 1. So that's why I've included it in here. So this is, again, spongy bone. The um, pink or peach color is actually the bone. And this is going to be trabeculae, which is the structure. It means beam. So we do not see any osteons in spongy bone. We see these trabeculae. And then all of this structure in here is actually bone marrow. If I were to zoom in, we actually have lining the outside, or sorry, lining the inside of the trabeculae is endosteum, which is means inside the bone. Endosteum. And that is about it. That brings us to the end. I hope it was helpful. Good luck.